Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the later half of September. I ended up reading 11 books in the later half of September, so September 15th to the 30th. I read some amazing books this month, so I'm so excited to talk to you about them. So let's get started. So the first book that I ended up reading in the later half of September was Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. This is obviously a Christmas romance, and I'm not somebody who has to like read Christmas books during Christmas time. I kind of read them all year round. I don't really have a preference when I read them. And this was one of the three books that I have still to read by Talia Hibbert before I read all of her backlist. So um, I decided to just pick it up. It was on any play for me to listen to. So I was like, why the heck not? This is the romance between Bailey and Cash. Bailey is a barista at this coffee shop and this guy comes in almost every single day. His name is Cash and he is deemed hot coffee guy. And he always orders a coffee from Bailey specifically and is like, surprise me with, with whatever drink you think I'd like. And so she makes these elaborate, beautiful drinks for him and is low key crushing on him. Well, one thing happens to where Cash is there when Bailey doesn't have a job anymore and he hires her to work at his tattoo parlor. So the two of them are forced to spend time together and maybe admit their feelings for each other because Cash may or may not have purposefully gone to this coffee shop just to see Bailey every day because um he, he doesn't drink fancy coffee <laughs> so he was just there to watch her i loved how christmasy this book was it just gave me amazing feelings it's also like still 90 degrees in texas right now even though it's fall and so i needed some winter vibes because it is too hot here okay these two characters were just great and i really liked their chemistry in here and cash was totally 100 percent smitten over bailey i love to see a smitten man this was really cute and sweet it's not my favorite talia hibbert but it's definitely one that i see myself rereading especially during christmas time because i do read a lot more christmas books during the christmas season but i can honestly read them all year round anyway uh tropes in here you have artistic character because cash is definitely artistic he is a wonderful tattoo artist um it's christmas related a tatted hero and it is a winter read. I gave this book a four out of five stars. Another winter read, I was I was needing winter reads, okay, uh, was Snowstorm by Cassie Mint. I've been slowly reading Cassie Mint novellas every now and then when I feel like it. The meet cute in this one is just so funny. I need to make a meet cute romance rec video where like the meet cute moments are to die for. So Quinn, our heroine, she's an American woman who's I think staying in England for a little bit and she decides to go on a tour group to this duke's castle or estate i think it's a castle anyway she is very sleep deprived very jet lagged and she goes into one of the rooms that's full of paintings and sits on a bench and accidentally falls asleep and the tour group leaves <laughs> like they don't they don't tell her that they're leaving and um she wakes up to the duke like over her face waking her up um because he's like why are you asleep inside of my house. Theo is the duke. He is the one who wakes her up and he is immediately enchanted by her. And there is a snowstorm outside so Quinn cannot leave whenever she is woken up so she has to stay the night at his castle with him. So they obviously decide to have some fun together that night. <laughs> a memorable quote in this one is, kiss me like you mean it, your grace. <laughs> so cute. Uh, tropes, there's a duke. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, an amazing meet cute moment. It's a novella, there's a snowstorm involved, and it is a winter read. I gave this book four out of five stars. I don't know where my physical copy is right now. No clue, it's not on my shelf, I don't know where it is. Um, but I've read Plain Love by Avery Kingston because I met her at Wanderlust earlier this month. This is a very short novella that was at her table, and I really wanted to pick it up because I heard it had disability representation. Our hero is a wheelchair user. This is the romance between Lainey and Xavier. Lainey is terrified of flying. I think she's going to a wedding in Ireland, her brother's wedding, so she has to get on this plane. She's terrified of flying, so she decides to get herself drunk before she gets on the plane in hopes that it will help her with her nervousness. Um, she then gets seated next to Xavier, who happens to be a wheelchair user. He is paralyzed from, I believe, the waist down. And he got on the plane before her, so she did not see him transfer from his wheelchair to the seat. And so this whole flight, they're talking and bantering and getting to know each other and finding each other attractive. And Xavier doesn't really know how to tell Lainey that he's in a wheelchair. Um, and then something happens to where the two of them end up at the same 
wedding. Xavier may or may not be the best man. And she realizes uh, some things, obviously, and things go from there. This was a really cute novella. I obviously wanted just more from it. I feel like this would have been an amazing full length novel. I did like these characters and how they uh, helped each other like overcome their fears. However, this was not my favorite thing ever. Uh, number one is because of the language used sometimes in this book. Um, an example being Lainey calling herself a specific S L blank T word um, if uh, she would to go home with Xavier and have fun with him. Like she's calling herself that word. I don't like that word. I don't like when people use that word. And so again, that's just a personal preference of mine, but there were certain sentences and things like that that were kind of like words that I did not vibe well with. And then there was a whole conflict with Lainey's brother that um, was totally, I feel like uncalled for. Like, I don't feel like it needed to happen in the book. I didn't see the purpose of it. But I did like these two characters and the story. And I really did like Avery Kingston's writing, except for those few words that I did not care for. Um, so I ended up giving this book a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Uh, tropes in here, you have Brother's Best Friend. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a Me Cute moment. Um, there's disability representation. It's a novella and there's a tatted hero and the hero is also a veteran. I then decided to pick up Tattered Stars by Katherine Cowles, the first book in the Tattered and Torn series. Brie from In Love and Words and I are putting together our Chronically Courageous book club um, in October and our live shows, I believe, let me double check, on the 14th of October. Yes, it's October 14th on my channel to discuss Shattered Sea, which is the fourth book in the Tattered and Torn series. So I have to go read the books in the series and I got all of the audiobooks on uh, Audible during the Audible sale. So this was perfect. I'm currently reading book two right now. Just want to mention that. Anyway, book one is Tattered Stars. This is the romance between Hayes and Everly. Hayes has never really liked Everly because when they were younger, Everly's father ended up kidnapping Hayes's little sister and keeping her in a shed for a couple of days. But Everly was the one who rescued her. She got on her horse, rode her horse all the way down to town to the police station to report what her father did to this little girl. Hayes's family is totally grateful for Everly for saving Shiloh, his sister. But Hayes just is very guilty about the whole situation because he was supposed to be watching his sister during this time and he thinks it's his fault she was kidnapped and he just wants zero association with that man's family. But it's been years since this occurrence and Everly has moved back into town. She has inherited her family's property and estate. Her mother has passed and passed it on to her and her dad is in jail for what he did. And she really wants to fix up the property and make it an animal sanctuary. Hayes hears wind that someone has taken over at the property. He goes to seek out who, who did it. He's the uh, town sheriff and he wants to know what's going on and he ends up cross Everly and he is not very happy. But then with the help of his family and obviously getting to know Everly, he realizes that she should not be held accountable for her father's sins. The two cannot stop being around each other and thinking about each other and the rest goes from there. This was my first Catherine Cowles book and it definitely will not be my last. Her writing definitely gripped me in here and I don't normally like suspense parts in suspense romances. I feel like blah about them like they're not the best thing in the world but I feel like this one kept me on the edge of my seat. Her writing style really reminds me of a Britney Cherry book which is which is good because Britney, Britney Cherry's top five favorite author list for me. I really loved reading about Hayes and Everly and you really did get to see these two fully fall for each other on page which was beautiful and you also got to see them like grow as individual people too by getting to know each other and growing and healing from what happened to them in their past. And so yeah, I can't wait to read more of the series. Book two is really entertaining so far. Trigger warning here, obviously for kidnapping tropes, um, amazing audiobook. It's an amazing audiobook. Uh, it's a book with pets. The hero has a dog as well as everything he's trying to make an animal sanctuary. Um, it's hate to love at first. It's romantic suspense and this does take place in a small town. I believe the whole series does. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I ended up picking up Monster's Bride by R.K. Pierce. This was a Kindle Unlimited find. I just saw this cover and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Um, and immediately downloaded it. So this is a fantasy monster romance. Orissa is a human princess from this kingdom and she is forced to marry her kingdom's rival 
Prince Noor from the Minotaur Kingdom. Apparently the Minotaur Kingdom has been attacking theirs for years and if they get in this marriage alliance, the fighting will stop. Noor and Arissa are not happy about this situation. Arissa does not want to marry a Minotaur dude because they look scary and they have been attacking her people for years. And Noor does not want to marry a human woman because humans are weak and he does not want a weak woman as his wife. But they agree to this obviously to inherit their birthright to help their kingdoms. So they get married and learn to have to live with each other despite hating each other's kind. This definitely gave me Radiance vibes in that sense because you're having to marry an entirely different species for an alliance and you don't like each other at first. Well, Radiance is, they find each other ugly. They don't like each other. They don't not like each other. They like them as people. They're not in love with them. Whereas this one is definitely hate to love besides friends to lovers in the beginning. This one kind of let me down. I was really interested and really hooked into the story at the beginning with the wedding and the wedding scene and the hate between the two. And then it just like felt anticlimactic. I also felt weird sometimes with the language and the descriptions the author chose for this book. Like this is a fantasy romance book, right? Why, why, why is a minotaur wearing a red t-shirt? It literally wrote t-shirt and the guy wearing boxers. I don't know, that just doesn't vibe well with me for fantasy books. I don't know about y'all, maybe just be a personal thing for me, but I don't feel like that reads fantasy. It was the author's choice, I totally get it, but it did take me out of the story, not gonna lie. I really liked the premise and the world, it was very cool, and the tension between the two at the beginning was great to me. It just like fizzled out and the ending and the conflict just was like very predictable. Didn't really care for that. I just gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars, more leaning towards a 3, honestly. Um, trigger warning in here for poisoning, tropes, arranged marriage, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There are monsters and it is royalty. I read a very short 25 page novella called Toll for the Troll. <laughs> this is just about a woman who's trying to like save her sister's life and she goes and finds this doctor and uh, while they're on their journey back to her sister, they have to pass the bridge where this troll lives and the way that the troll will pay accept payment for a passage is if she gets with him for a time, you know? This was fine, 2.5 stars, not much to it. Doesn't really end in an HEA, it's just a snippet of a fun time between a troll and a human woman. Next is a fun one. I was just scrolling on KU and found this by happenstance. This is Meet Me at the Anvil by Kate Pryor. This is a standalone historical romance with chronic illness representation, or I assume, Historicals are kind of hard for me to describe with chronic illnesses because back then we they did not have the technology we do now. So you were not able to diagnose people with certain conditions. But like, I would think that this girl maybe has POTS or something along those lines because she's like a chronic fainter and she's known for fainting. So our heroine's name in here is Diane. And Diane is betrothed to marry a guy she holds no passion for. And she is instead like really attracted to his best man. And so she does have this condition like where she faints at inopportune moments where she doesn't know when it's gonna happen, it just happens. And so she ends up fainting at the altar when she's getting married. When she finally comes to, when she finally wakes up, she realizes that she could never marry this man. He is boring. He, I have no passion for him. What's the point? And so she decides to run away, leave him at the altar. And then the girl's mess man like sees her doing this and chases after her and joins her in running away together. And he probably also has feelings for her too and is trying to tell her about his feelings. This was such a cute story. I really related to Diane, obviously with the fainting issues and her thoughts about how people treat her when she faints. I also just felt her when she faints at very inopportune moments. Like I will probably faint at stressful situations like my wedding. The hero's name is Liam and the way that he cares for her, it's so cute. It's so cute. I really liked this. I love how the story ended up wrapping up. This is not a five star for me, however, because I do believe there are some things in here that needed to be a little bit more fleshed out. We don't get the hero's point of view in here, so we don't really feel his feelings. And sometimes I felt like I needed that. Like I needed to know what this guy was feeling. Like, why does he love her? What sparked 
the love for him we never got those answers and that's thing and those are things i love reading about a memorable quote in here that i love is i yearn to know and love all of you tropes an artist the heroine is an artist she is innocent you know like she's never been with anybody but she's very fascinated by the act and so she has a sketchbook full of very steamy drawings. It's a book with a pet. Um, she has this goat, this fainting goat that just follows them everywhere. It's so cute. Chronic illness, the fainting condition. Um, it's a historical romance that's a standalone. It's on Kindle Unlimited. The heroine has never been kissed before. The hero kisses her. Um, there's a one bed. It's disability representation. There's a runaway bride, a scarred character. The hero is actually scarred. It's a novella and they are stuck at an inn in one point. I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. I read another Kate Pryor. She wrote a few monster romances too. So this is Love Laugh Lich and this is a monster romance. This is also a workplace romance. Our heroine is basically the assistant to this demon creature like this personal assistant at a workplace you know her name is lily and her boss sovin is kind of like the ceo for this very evil company she accidentally walks into his office at a very inopportune moment so she's bringing him his coffee for the day knocks on the door opens it and there he is with no clothes on and she's like oh my gosh no <laughs> and walks out and then things aren't the same ever since that point um and the two of them are forced to like admit their feelings for each other um this was really cute and hot and i did not expect sovin this creature to be so sweet but he totally is like he would do anything to keep her include like send a dude to the pits of hell for asking out his woman <laughs> a memorable quote in this one is you're not means to an end you are the end tropes kindle unlimited it's a monster romance it's a workplace romance we have a very possessive hero and it is a novella i give this book also four out of five stars another cassie mint that i decided to pick up was runaway bride i picked this one up because i was watching one of rachel from rachel reason sings most recent videos that came up last month and she was talking about this book and i was like sold I need to pick it up now. So I immediately picked it up and read it. So thank you so much, Rachel. You and Samantha really do drive my reading for Cassie Mint, not gonna lie. <laughs> so the reason why I was really interested in this one because Rachel was talking about this hero, his name's Leo, and him literally killing his father and his brother in order to get the heroine Mia because they're in a mafia they're in mafia families mia's in this one family and leo's in this other family and so mia's set up to marry the bratva boss of leo's family but leo has two guys that are at higher ranks than him his father and his brother so he's like i can't marry mia unless i'm bratva boss so i'm gonna kill him he kills his own freaking family to get mia <laughs> and so i was like sold let's let's read this and i really did enjoy this one so yes leo has made it his life mission to marry mia he has been utterly entranced by her from the moment that he met her and wants her to be his but then when they're getting married um before she even walks down the altar like she's late to the wedding he's like where is my woman she has jumped out the window and has run away from him and he is now set to go find his bride i loved leo he would do literally anything anything to make this woman his and oh my gosh love it i really liked mia she was very strong in her like personal beliefs like she's very resistant to this marriage arrangement simply because she had no say in it people were saying like you will marry him without any other like op opinions of her own um and so she's just saying no to him for the sole purpose of not being able to give her two cents into the matter but then she realizes she made a huge freaking mistake because she's falling for leo and it's like dang I shouldn't, I shouldn't have had my own feelings in this situation because this guy is good. <laughs> this was so highly entertaining. I really like this one. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a mafia romance. The hero is very possessive. Um, it's a runaway bride. It's a novella. And there is a wedding in this one. So I give this one four to five stars. I then read the last Bridgerton book. This is On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. You can expect a Bridgerton reading vlog soon where I break down my thoughts on all eight of the Bridgerton books. It was a very interesting vlog to say the least, um, so I'm not gonna talk about my thoughts in this video. That vlog will come out either either later this month or the month after. It depends on how long it takes for me to edit the video. I have over an hour's worth of footage, so. And then the last book that I ended up reading in September was a reread of mine. I decided to just reread Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. My roommate, before I moved in with her this uh, past semester, had never watched any of the Twilight films. And I was like, 
that needs to change because Twilight is very nostalgic for me. This is a series that got me into the romance genre got me into loving romance. So we watched all the movies, we marathoned all of them in a few days, and I got her hooked onto them, obviously. And I was talking about how different the movies are from the book and what ways they are. And I was like, you know what? I just want to reread Breaking Dawn. I don't want to read the other books. And I'm not reading this book. I don't necessarily think it's a good book. It just holds a lot of memories and nostalgia for me. And I will, I will, I will leave it at that. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I ended up reading in the later half of September. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any pink related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.